outbreak so that's why we are doing most of our activities uh, online uh, dr mohammed al uthman you can give you a chance to introduce yourself please tafadhal assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh masakum allah al khair jami' and uh, in the beginning i'd like to thank uh, al habib group for uh, organizing this webinar and i'd like to thank uh, my colleague uh, dr tawfiq mzaini for this invitation um, Inshallah, I'll, uh, will, I'll present um, and one of the interesting and uh, enjoyable uh, topic. Uh, I used to give it actually in, as interactive, uh, common pediatric exam. Term. It's an, a good topic. Everyone usually is like it and having interactive. So I'll try my best uh, during this uh, webinar to invite you to um, have um, an interactive session, so we'll show things. I'll keep my uh, chat bar open, so I'll see you, what you are thinking of. Uh, so after that, inshallah, we'll go through the topic. Madri, Dr. Tawfiq, do you want to start or just an introduction? Well, it's a very good idea, uh, so that we can really catch up the time. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, if you don't mind, if you, if you have your lectures ready, you can uh, share uh, your screen. Uh, while Dr. Abdullah and Nasser is coming uh, with us. Uh, I think you can go ahead, Bismillah. Uh, Doctor, uh, can you open the mic, uh, Dr. Mohammed, uh, please, if you don't mind? Uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, so, as I said, common pediatric exam has always been an interesting topic because it's interactive. Uh, and everyone like to participate in, in seeing and give the differential diagnosis uh, to see what is it. So over this talk, uh, inshallah, um, this is my objective in my talk, recognize the common pediatric uh, dermatological condition, uh, expanding your differential diagnosis if you see such rash, rashes and review the treatment plan, uh, identify skin manifestation of systemic disease. So so that we go through. So we'll show the picture first, then we'll go um, uh, about uh, those uh, uh, subjects. So to see what you are thinking of. Uh, uh, what you can see, I'll open the chatting so I'll see what your answer is. Great, uh, Dr. Mohammed. Allah Ta'ala, thank you very much. And I would like uh, just give me one minute to welcome uh, Dr. Abdullah Bahmed and Dr. Nasr Al Isa uh, for joining us. Can just let the technical problems. Uh, we can, if you, Dr. Abdullah, you can open your mic and uh, uh, introduce yourself, please. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Hayyakum Allah. Barakallah. Thank you, Dr. Nasser al Isa. Welcome to uh, the webinar group. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum salam. Hayakum Allah. Welcome, uh, Jamian. We are very proud uh, to have the best pediatric emergency physicians in the country uh, presenting to our webinar uh, tonight. Uh, without uh, delay, I will just give the mic back to Dr. Muhammad al Uthman, uh, and then we will have, after his lecture, five minutes for discussion. Welcome, everyone. Bismillah. Barakatillah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يعني يبدو بعض just I'll go back so I'll start with this slide so uh, what you can see in this slide and what your differential diagnosis for the participant you can add in the chatting uh, bar so we can have an interaction at that uh, session this is another another picture you can see. Third picture you can see. Okay, and here we have a genital area and clear spared. So atopic dermatitis is an acquired common disease. We are seeing it in pediatric up to three to five percent of children uh, from six months to ten years. So they will have an experience with an atopic dermatitis. It's ill defined as you can see in the in the rash, diaper area usually it's uh, spared. An acute uh, 
usually coming like erythematous, scaly, physical, crusted, and chronic, maybe scaly and dignified, pigmented area. So um, just to see it again. Okay, so as you can see here, like acute compared to acute with chronic one. So what you can see, Madri, Dr. Tawfiq, Hal Masmuh al chat lil people can write in the chatting bar or la? Yes, they can write their comments in the, the questions. Yes, if you have any platform. comments about the picture, really, I'd like to hear from you what yes. you are thinking when we are uh, showing the pictures. Yes, and for the discussions and for the sake of the time, uh, okay. they can allow. So what you can see here is actually ill defined um, an area where it's some of them like uh, wheels. So, and you may see here like prominent the ear uh, margin, it's a bit swollen, there is a cheek swollen. So another common uh, and pediatric crash we are seeing uh, in emergency or may see it in your clinic. So it's an articardia. Usually it's transient and with demarcated wheels, usually probiotic, it's part of IgE mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Uh, may uh, relieve central uh, cleaning and trigger is numerous. Sometimes it's like food, uh, insect bite, uh, so there, there are many uh, numerous um, uh, infection, uh, numerous uh, triggering for, for this. Uh, there is a uh, serious and, uh, 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 disease can be with articaria, what we call it, and septic, uh, sorry, uh, and anaphylactic shock. So very usually they present with systemic manifestation like shortness of breath, could be vomiting, diarrhea, uh, as well as decrease in the blood pressure and uh, could be comatose as well. So it's an, a, a spectrum of allergy, but usually articaria is limited to the skin. Other system is not involved. So usually we are treating with uh, antihistamine, either as oral antihistamine, or we may use an parenteral uh, in severe cases. What you can see here, so again, uh, when we are seeing, we can look to the eyes, conjunctiva, we can see lips, we can see cheeks. Uh, and another, uh, another one here, one of my patients, you can see the lips is a bit dusky, cracked lips. So what's coming, what's crossing your mind? I'm expecting most of you know this, it's Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease is one of the systemic uh, disease, is part of vasculitis disease and um, presenting usually with skin manifestation. So it's an peak at age of one to two years and most of the cases would be diagnosed by five years. So it's more common to see it in young children. Uh, there is an acute phase which take one to two weeks and followed by subacute phase which may take up to four weeks. Clinical uh, criteria to diagnose uh, Kawasaki disease is always fever. Fever more than five days and not explained by um, any other cause. And after that will be four out of five. We may start from the, uh, up in the head. So we are talking about bilateral non virulent conjunctivitis, change in the mucoma, uh, mucous membranes, cervical lymphadenopathy, and skin rise as we saw, and change in the peripheral extremities usually coming with disquamation. So the main things about this disease um, is usually it's complication. So always we have to have a right diagnosis for uh, such illness. And if we are talking about uh, the labs, uh, we, it may be helpful, but we are dependent mainly on the clinical uh, features. So high water blood, high SR and CRP, increasing in the platelets in the second phase. So all of those will be a feature helping to diagnose the Kawasaki disease. Differential diagnosis is varies. Um, scarlet fever, one of the common uh, disease we are seeing, and it's having an, a mini um, clinical manifestation of an Kawasaki disease. So uh, keep it in your mind. Usually with Kawasaki, we don't have like pharyngitis. So when you see pharyngitis, think about scarlet fever and non virulent conjunctivitis, it's not common to see it. One of the differential diagnoses we are seeing nowadays is like toxic syndrome, which is, you may hear about it, and many COVID presentation may present with this. So they presenting with an, um, a toxic shock syndrome and it may mimic Kawasaki disease. So if you see nowadays and such pictures or uh, crossing your mind Kawasaki, remember, and a COVID can present. 
In our hospital, we saw patient admitted as query Kawasaki term to be COVID. Uh, other differential diagnosis is like um, Stephen Johnson and systemic GRA uh, as well as uh, SSS syndrome. Uh, usually the treatment, as uh, we know Kawasaki is vasculitis, so uh, main things would be an coronary artery disease. So uh, usually presenting as complication is aneurysmal uh, formation. So Usually we admit those patients for full cardiac evaluation to be and to treat them with high dose of IV IG. Uh, usually we are giving two grams per kg um, as a single dose and then steroidal like an, an aspirin will be either high dose in the beginning then we'll taper it to them low dose as treatment to decrease the chance of uh, aneurysmal formation. If we deep a Kawasaki disease without treatment, up to 20% of the patient may develop aneurysm. So if you give the treatment within the first 10 days of the illness, you can decrease the chance of uh, an Kawasaki disease, uh, sorry, an coronary artery disease up to below 5%. Complication, as we said, an coronary artery uh, aneurysm and aseptic meningitis, called bladder dilatation, pancreatitis, and facial nerve pulse. So we are still talking about vasculitis. So we were talking about medium uh, blood vessel disease. And now we'll move to small blood vessel disease. So what is this? Non-planching rash, papules. OK. This is an HSP, inoxial line perfora. It's an, uh, quite common as well. It's an, a small blood vessel disease. And uh, those patients usually coming with skin rash, up to 100% of the patient, they should have it. And uh, they will have other clinical manifestation, including joint pain, abdominal pain. Sometimes it will be puzzling us, like patient coming with only abdominal pain. So we think about, oh, it could be pancreatitis, it could be an appendicitis. Uh, and after uh, time, rash will appear. So the sequence of the symptoms may, may be different. So uh, lower extremity is usually affected um, uh, in most of the patients. So we are looking to the buttock area. We are looking for lower extremities as this disease is mainly affecting lower, but it may affecting upper um, uh, extremities and trunk too. So uh, clinical manifestation, uh, as we said, non-planching uh, uh, rash and uh, including of musculoskeletal system uh, like arthralgia or arthritis, abdominal pain, Renal involvement, uh, one of the important part we have to evaluate with any patient we are suspecting of HSP. So they may present with hematuria, hypertension, or even renal failure. Management, usually supportive, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, usually we are using for controlling the pain. Steroid is controversy, and there is an guidelines to which case I'm going to use steroids, like severe abdominal pain, or chitis, in this involvement. So to be used as steroid um, as an uh, adjacent um, treatment. Those patients um, usually coming look unwell uh, and they present with this kind of rash. Uh, fortunately, we are not used seeing those patients uh, that much because we are starting to introduce vaccine. So I think you know what I'm talking about. I think everyone should know it by now. Okay, this is pathognomonic. If you see it, this is measles. There is no other than measles. This is what we call couplet spots. But unfortunately, this rash is disappeared so fast, like soon after the, uh, after the uh, beginning of the illness. So you probably will not see it in all of the patients. So measles is an aeropiola, which is a viral infection, usually having prodromal uh, symptoms like any other viruses, high grade fever, Coriza, conjunctivitis, and colored spots as we see lethargy. Exanthem is the characteristic of the exanthem of measles is its descending pattern. So it's usually starting in the forehead and retroauricular area and start to descend down. So we are saying it's a descending and pattern of the rash. Uh, plus they are usually toxic looking. We are not seeing it, alhamdulillah, that much nowadays because of vaccine. Uh, so uh, treatment uh, diagnosis will be serology. So we are seeing I, L, aminoglobulins. Uh, so to see to diagnose the measles and treatment usually asymptomatic. Severe uh, disease may be treated with an vitamin A. 
complication, and this is why we are actually um, uh, using a vaccination for this disease because we don't like those complications to happen. Mainly those lower ones, which is rare, like uh, subacute sclerosing uh, pan encephalitis. So we may see those patients, and it's quite common in the southwest um, uh, Asia patients. So in Athens, Shubha, Philippine, and those areas. Again. You have to look carefully to this picture. Okay, what we can see here, actually you can see there is pallor, there is redness here, there is a bit of redness here, there is a rash bulbing like the trunk. So here we have tongue, so this is actually strawberry. So what you call white strawberry tongue and red strawberry tongue. And usually the appearance because of there is a swelling in the, in the buds of the of the tongue, so it looks like strawberry. So I think you are, you know what I'm talking about. So this is a red face where there is discomation and uh, of the uh, uh, digits, usually affecting upper and hands and feet and may affect the genital area too. So there will be skin peeling. So I'm talking about scarlet fever, which is one of the complication of group A strip, strip uh, beta hemolytic. Um, clinical manifestation as any other strips like pharyngitis and high-grade fever with some mucoc special mucocutaneous changes as we uh, saw there, like muco mucous membrane changes as well as skin changes. The rash, the characteristic of the rash for and scarlet fever is what we call sandpaper rash. So sandpaper is tiny papules. Maybe you are feeling it could be all over the body and mainly will be in the axillary and the growing area. And this formation is a late presentation uh, of this. Diagnosis uh, will be clinical diagnosis when you are seeing it, but to uh, and confirm your diagnosis, we can use a group um, uh, A strip uh, culture, throat culture, and as well, we can do a rapid antigen test as a quick test can give you a result soon. And if you see full picture, probably don't need to confirm that it will be a clinical diagnosis. Then is still, <coughs> still uh, the um, most effective um, uh, treatment and still the uh, first choice of treatment. Okay, I think everyone knows this. What's the characteristic here? We can see it's like everywhere there is rash and it looks like there is like here physicals. So it's clear physicals and it's all erupted. So uh, we are talking about check and box. So chicken box um, is an Ebrisella uh, zoster virus. Uh, so those patients usually coming with variety of um, uh, symptoms. Uh, and we are not seeing it that much actually. And such uh, severe picture, we are not seeing it actually that nowadays. We, you may see few um, uh, spots of physicals in some of the patients. And that's because we are um, using um, a uh, vaccine. So chicken box is not that common as before we were seeing um, uh, in our practice. So uh, incubation period uh, for, uh, it's quite long, up to two to three weeks. And usually presented with high grade fever and typical rash coming like um, uh, physicals. Uh, so, prodromal symptoms, it's like any other viruses, and uh, uh, there is pruritus, which is the uh, most uh, annoying uh, symptoms they present with, so it's coming with itchiness uh, if it's severe extension. Uh, varicella is quite um, an, uh, having a spectrum of um, complications. So, uh, if we talk about patient coming with secondary bacterial infection, so that's up to five to 10% of those patients. The most important things to know about this is quite uh, common to see like a patient coming with varicella after a few days is coming with a uh, skin pain and deep and deep palpation. So remember, necrotizing fasciitis is, can be a uh, secondary infection for varicella, secondary bacterial infection. Keep it in your mind. If you see a patient who improved from the chicken box and is coming with a uh, secondary bacterial infection with this media and high-risk uh, patient. High-risk patient, if we are talking about, we are talking about immunocompromised patient as well as neonates. So uh, in neonates, especially those who, who their mother had a chickenpox three days before and five days after, 
uh, delivery because at this time, uh, critical time, they will get the virus, but they will not get the immune response from the mother. So they will be at high risk for complication like pneumonitis. I remember one of the patients, unfortunately, he died with pneumonitis with chicken pox. He was newborn. So keep it in your mind and those high risk uh, age and those condition, I mean, the compromise uh, is maybe may lethal. It's very highly contagious. So if someone in the school, like in, in the class, affected after two weeks, three weeks, you will see half of the class being affected with it. So usually if you see those patients, usually we are keeping them away from uh, school to go back to school uh, till all crust being, and uh, all the region are clustered. So they are not any more contagious. Uh, other rare complications like Ray syndrome, guillain barre and uh, nephritis and orchitis, uveitis, all those can be complications of varicella. So an activation of, um, again, an activation of uh, virus. So this is herpes zoster. So it's an activation. Usually we are seeing it in immunocompromised patient as well as elderly, like if you go to the adult, um, uh, adulthood. So they are at risk of reactivation. So quite common, we are seeing it a lot. So if you are seeing a patient open his mouth, you are seeing this white patches and there is a red halo around it and it's coming mainly in the uh, back of the mouth and can be in the anterior actually too. So we are talking about, about hand foot mouth disease, which is an Kukzaki virus infection. There is a spectrum, it may affecting only the throat or it could be extended to affect hand and feet. It's usually self-limiting disease. Um, the things will be, patient will present with irritability and fever. So uh, this is usually symptomatic uh, treatment and be sure that patient is taking orally well, nothing more. Here, what you can see there, and if someone see the space, you'll understand. So what we call this slab cheeks, as well as this kind of rash. So we are talking about fifth disease or erythema infectiosum. It's caused by barbovirus. It's mostly preschool age and recognized usually by its clinical diagnosis. Treatment is supportive. The only thing interesting in this, uh, if you have a patient like with an uh, hemoglobinopathies, like an secular you have to be careful with those patients because bubble virus may cause a plastic uh, crisis. So be careful when you are dealing with a patient with uh, disease and having this abnormalities. Another challenge cases we may see, um, actually emergency, or you may see it as well in New York clinic, which is patient coming uh, with irritability and high grade fever. And when the fever disappear, this rash, uh, this rash will appear. So, so I'm talking about erythema, uh, sorry, we are talking about uh, an rhizola and phantom. Rhizola and phantom caused by an uh, herpes simplex 6. Uh, it's causing high-grade fever. Almost 15% of the patient who present with the first febrile convulsion, this is the reason, which is an, an, uh, an rhizola and phantom. So when a patient coming with irritability, with high-grade fever, or oh, what's going on? So it could be an... Uh, and CNS infection, what's, what's going on, especially with coming with seizure. So in a clinical assessment um, and be sure about an uh, CNS involvement. And uh, usually it's a benign disease. It should take around three to five days and go away by itself. But what you need is to be sure that you are not dealing with any other differential diagnosis. So rhizola and phantom is uh, quite common. Usually the patient when the fever uh, uh, erupted, usually they look very well. So they are coming well and the parents are panicked because this rash appear and they don't know what's going on. So here, I think um, if you see those crusts, okay. This is embitigo. Embitigo usually is secondary bacterial infection. So we are seeing it mainly on the face and could be in extremities too. Um, and characterized by this honey crust um, appearance. And the treatment will be either low topical or systemic antibiotic, depending on the area affected, and uh, usually caused by strep or staph uh, infection. What you can see here, again, it's vesicles. You can see here some outside the mouth, and we are seeing some there. Gingivia, 
tongue, the tip of the tongue. Again, this is viral infection, but this is herpes simplex one. This uh, is gingival stomatitis. So it's a uh, quite common disease as well. We are seeing every now and then. Uh, it's self-limiting disease, uh, but usually presented with poor oral intake, irritability, drooling, uh, high-grade fever, all of this can be with um, uh, gingival stomatitis. The treatment will be supportive. If the patient, you catch the patient in the first and extensive disease, we may start with them acyclovir. Some patient may need to be admitted for IV acyclovir, like immunocompromised patient, or those have very poor oral intake with that. Typical analgesia can uh, help uh, those patients. So uh, that's, that's about it. It's usually taking a bit long course. It will take around five to seven days. So I uh, don't think it will go like soon. So most of the patient may come on a second visit seeking a medical advice. This is an actually transmission of the um, virus from the mouth to the, to the finger or to the digit. So this is herpetic with low. Again, it's uh, an, uh, quite painful. Uh, some of the patient coming would seen somewhere else and being been uh, incision and drainage done as they are thinking about abscess formation. But actually this is an um, herpetic with low. You don't need to um, rupture those uh, physicals, but you need either apply either topical or systemic acyclovir would be uh, enough for uh, those patients. Plus analgesia. Patient look well coming with this. We are seeing it mainly in the school age. So this rash appear like small one, then start to rub more and more. That is the characteristic of this rash. We may go for it. So what you can see, what you, what you are thinking of. Okay, so let's go for the characteristic of this rash. As you can see, it's oval shape. Um, as well as here, there is an oval shape here. Uh, when you go for a um, distribution, you can see like coming like this. So we call this is Christmas tree. So this is vitreous rosy, and usually we are calling this an herald patch. This is, and we don't know what's the cause of this, of this one, but usually coming with uh, sometimes minimal itchness with a scaly over it. So the things you have to think about, like if you see this picture, like tinea infections, uh, which is may mimic this one, but usually this one would be an, a bit erupted mainly in the trunk. So, and this is an uh, vitreous rosy. The treatment, usually it's just supportive, nothing to be done. Antihistamine may use for another one who is having itching. It's self-limiting disease and it go by itself within six weeks. This is the brother um, of the one. So this is Vitreus's alba. It's coming like a white patches there. So again, it's the same for Vitreus's rosy. It's the same um, and, and disease and it go away by itself. So what we have here? Probably you may see it in a clinic more than emergency, but some patient may come to the emergency with those things. Okay, this is WART. Uh, WART is an viral illness. What's the virus causing this? Babyloma virus. So Babyloma virus is causing, and there is a very um, variant type of um, an WART. So it can be uh, like you can see here, you call this puppy form. We can, this is angular, uh, common planter, so those all kind of words. So it's an viral infection. And if it's come to the genital area, you have to be careful. So because this is, can be, especially for kids, when it's come to the genital area, oh, it can be an, uh, one of the signs of child abuse. So keep it in your mind. The treatment is varies actually from the strong acid like um, uh, salicylic acid or uh, can be as well uh, other herbal medicine they are using and cryotherapy, laser, so there is variant um, and uh, 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 treatment for, for warts. What you can see there, this is the characteristic of it. We call that is the middle in the middle, the center. We call this one. Okay. So this is molluscum contagiosum. Molluscum contagiosum is caused by viral infection again and it's caused by pox virus, one of the biggest virus we know. Uh, again, it's contagious, so it's, uh, it's may contagious, so it uh, 
kid scratch the area, then go to the other area. So he may uh, have an, a different um, cluster of, of, the, of the, uh, uh, those lesions. So if it's involved in the genital area, again, it can be as a usual, but because he is uh, scratching one area, then scratching the genitalia, but keep in your mind as well and genital, sorry, and uh, sexual abuse. It's self-limiting disease. Treatment, usually that they don't need the treatment. Uh, sometimes if it's that extensive, they may for um, scraping by dermatology, they will go there and they will do scraping for them because if you put it hard, it will come out. What is this? Everyone should know this. If you see this one, remember, this is coming. This is very serious rash. This is meningococcemia. So if you see this, probably up to 30 to 50%, this patient will die. So you have to be very aggressive with management of those patients. So alhamdulillah, we are not seeing that much, but you know, with every hedge, there will be and could be and contaminate. So everyone, um, one want to go to Hajj, usually we are giving them uh, cocal um, uh, vaccine. So it's a serious, um, uh, as well as very uh, short course and uh, deterioration so fast. So if you see this one, always remember to do, to act very, very um, uh, urgent and start with support initially. Three, three, uh, and start treatment uh, with antibiotic as soon as possible. I may move now to uh, little ones, so neonates, which is common we see, especially um, new parents who doesn't know. You may see those coming to your clinic or to the emergency every now and then. So, so this is one, probably this one who's working in the postnatal world, they will see a lot of this. So um, they are when they, they will see this a lot. So it's coming with erythema paste with an a tip of yellow. And this is, we call it erythema toxicum. Its name is toxicum as a toxic, but actually it's benign. So this is one of the benign rash, nothing to be worried about. And if you rupture those um, uh, yellow, it's only isinophil there. So there is nothing, no infectious cause. Another one here is white spots over the tip of the nose, and we call this melia. So this is obstruction of the spacious gland in the nose. So, and quite common to see it in, in pediatric age and the neonates. Here, the usually this come like white, as again, uh, sometimes you may see like, like water there. So this is malaria. Malaria is obstruction of the sweet gland. That one spacious gland, this is sweet gland. So it's usually coming with high temperature, like in the summer and for the neonates. So you may see this one. Again, it's an benign rash, nothing to be worried about. Acne, neonatal acne. This is the effect of the hormones of the mothers on the babies. So you may, they may present with this. Again, it's a self-limiting disease. This is effect of the hormone and to go away by itself. This is not an eczema. So this is an neonatal acne. Looks a bit weird, this one is yellow there. And, but if you see, it's see there like there is no uh, inflammation around it. If you see here, some erupted as well. This is, and here there is, it's very easy to erupt. If you touch it to the tip of the cotton tip, it would erupt right away. This is an uh, bustular melanosis. So bustular melanosis, one of the benign rash as well in pediatric. Nothing to be worried about, just reassurance. We may see this again. Is it a benign rash? Doesn't look. So uh, you can see his actually there was a pulley which is ruptured and it's involving as well the skin folds there. So this is bacterial infection. So we have to uh, be cautious when you're seeing this because this may be an entrance for an bacteremia and a patient may be septic. So if a patient look well, uh, remember this one can be caused by strap and strips. And if you are talking about staph, we're talking about MRSA. So such patients with this such lesion is preferred to be admitted in the hospital, start with an anti IV antibiotic and should cover MRSA. So, and uh, those um, uh, patients, if they are look septic, oh, you have to treat them as septic child and with full septic workup and strong antibiotic. 
I think this is, will be the last slide. That's it. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy uh, those slides and the information we said about them. And uh, I'm not sure, Dr. Taufik, are we receiving the, um, any question now or? Mashallah, very Dr. impressive, very impressive uh, presentation, uh, Dr. Mohammed Al Uthman, mashallah, as usual. Yes, we have a few questions for you. The first question uh, about one, one doctor asking about the rule of echo in the presence of Kawasaki, in the case of Kawasaki disease, you yeah. know. Do, do yeah. you, uh, how, can you highlight, please? Uh, great. Uh, usually with Kawasaki disease, we are admitting the patient, as I said, first for full cardiac evaluation. So, and one of the major part of it is ECHO. What we can see in ECHO in Kawasaki disease, the initial stage of Kawasaki disease is what you call ectasia, which is dilatation of the coronary artery. And if it's there, that means this patient more likely, he may develop an, an uh, uh, aneurysm if he's not treated. And usually, we are following those patients with ECHO after 28 days. Just be sure there is no aneurysm formation. So, and as well as we are doing a 12 d CG, be sure everything is fine. Uh, okay. Uh, last question, Dr. Mohammed, regarding the COVID-19 uh, in kids with skin rash, please. Can you repeat the information again? Any child present uh, with skin rash, you have to be suspicious and precautious. Uh, um, can you remind us again, please? Yeah, uh, again, as I said, toxic shock syndrome may present with a patient. Some of them may present with an uh, peripheral, uh, 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 peripheral, like we call it, peripheral clots. So they presented with spots in their legs. Uh, so Kawasaki disease, one of the things may mimic and COVID. And I remember a patient who admit as query Kawasaki to be COVID. So they present with this kind of picture. It's good to see, uh, actually, if you're talking about the rash, it's good to see them. Uh, so they coming like on a spots in the peripheries uh, with, with COVID and it's been uh, reported from China as well as from Europe. And you can see, unfortunately, I don't have it now. I can show it to you, uh, how it looks like in the extremities. I, okay. Oh, طيب, Dr. Mohammed al uh, one question about the steroid for skin rash in children like uh, Kawasaki or like HSB, or like, do you, uh, are you in favor of IV steroid? Uh, uh, like for example, the one you mentioned to us, immunoglobulin uh, for those kids uh, yeah. with, 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 always, uh, with uh, this the varicella. The yeah, this is the importance actually of, of this talk, like, because um, uh, could be, uh, steroids could be the treatment and actually could be worse in the condition. If we are talking yeah. about infectious cause, and you are applying steroids, actually that, that make the things worse. Yes. So infection will, uh, probably secondary infection will appear. Or if you are talking about immunomodulator, like an uh, atopic dermatitis, it's maybe steroid will be helpful in those cases and in a certain part, not all of them actually, we are prescribing and uh, cortisone, but we are prescribe it for acute.